Hi everyone, 35 weeks pregnant. I'm just gonna say that again, 35 weeks pregnant. <laughs> wow, I feel like we are on the home stretch and even more on the home stretch if you watched my most recent video of me at the hospital my blood pressure is not behaving and we could be having a baby any week now which wow um so many emotions around kind of reaching that home stretch that last month you know like because i'm nearly 36 weeks so um it's it's really kind of emotional in a way because I infertility's not a fun thing you know like you hope something and hope something and hope something and then you just get your hopes shattered again and again and again and again and again and when you finally get that big fat positive and you get to the end of your pregnancy you just kind of feel like it's the end of an era I guess you could say it's like I, I remember feeling like this when Roman was born that all that heartache was finally gone because we finally were getting our baby you know um infertility infertility sorry um didn't beat us and we had this beautiful baby and now here we are gone through IVF again and got pregnant again and <laughs> here we are at the end of that pregnancy and very very soon <laughs> we're gonna have that baby in our arms <laughs> and I'm so happy <laughs> holy crap <laughs> I just can't believe we're finally like we're at the end now we're at the home stretch and I'm gonna have this baby in my arms and <laughs> we are never gonna have to do it infertility again because it's finished it's done <laughs> we don't we don't need any more children we've got one of each we've got a boy and now we're having a little girl and <laughs> there are so many of you out there who may never get that chance and feel very grateful that we have been blessed twice <laughs> and now i can blame it on the hormones <laughs> blame my crying on the pregnancy hormones oh stop get a grip get a grip woman oh my gosh Oh. Now my eyes are going to be all red, but it's just, wow, you know, it's like, wow, we're going to have another baby. <laughs> we are having another baby really, really soon. And I'm very happy about that, obviously. I just, it's just, when you, when you finally get out of that infertility rut and you've got everything you hoped and dreamed for, it's just, it's overwhelming it really is it's like well you know I'm now gonna be a mum of two when three four five years ago no not three years ago because Roman was born three years ago so <laughs> four five years ago um, I never thought I would be a mother at all so and, and now we're gonna have two kids <laughs> and it's just wonderful so I'm very very grateful and I hope you all get to experience these these hormonal moments that I'm currently experiencing and just being very grateful and yeah so <laughs> oh, that was good I just had a phone call from my mum so it gave me time to like settle my tears down and now I probably have really red eyes and my makeup smudged everywhere but hey who cares because they were tears of happiness and just relief that this horrid infertility journey is over. I say horrid, but really, I really enjoyed my infertility journey over all these years. You know, I, oh my gosh, just the number of things that have happened since. I can't imagine what my life would have been like if we didn't experience infertility. So I, I am grateful. It sounds weird to be grateful for infertility, but I am grateful for infertility. And I guess you probably will know what I mean when you get past infertility too and have a baby so yes yay Mila's gonna be here really soon <laughs> we're going for brunch we're meant to be going for lunch but we're going for brunch now because of my blood pressure um, misbehaving I have to go get regular checkups at the hospital 
and tomorrow is my first appointment since I was at the hospital on Monday. Um, I have to go do a urine, go give a urine sample, get a blood test, go on this CTG or something, whatever the thing that measures contractions and baby's heartbeat, and obviously blood pressure check. And I'm going to obviously probably continue to have these checks right up until Mila is delivered, um, which is the exact same story with Roman's um, pregnancy. Um, I'm not too sure how this blood pressure check is going to go tomorrow. If you're going to watch my, excuse me, if you're going to watch my Daily Till Baby vlogs, the one I filmed today, I actually had like fuzzy light moments in my eyes and it lasted for a good 30 seconds. So I'm not... <laughs> too confident that my blood pressure is going to be down from what it was it could be up <laughs> and um yeah so basically we've got a minimum of a week and a bit before i can be induced and we have a max of four weeks before i'm actually due so anywhere between a week and a half a week and a bit and four weeks and Mila's gonna be here. She's gonna be here. We're gonna use all the stuff in this room finally and it's just crazy. I just can't believe it. So things have gone a bit out of order. So if I rewind, basically what happened is over the weekend we had our wedding anniversary. Um, you might have seen my pictures on Facebook or Instagram. Martin made me this beautiful breakfast with pancakes and maple syrup and banana and oh it was just and bacon and cream. Oh, it was so good. It was amazing. Um, so that was our sixth wedding anniversary. Um, but anyway, over the weekend I started getting a few headaches and I started getting the visual disturbances and with high blood pressure, that's a sign. Um, um, and so I, it was kind of minor, like my headaches weren't like pounding me and I didn't need to t take Panadol or anything for them, but they were there and I don't get headaches. So it was still a sign for me that something wasn't quite right. And then I started getting the flashing lights. They were nowhere near as bad as what I got with Roman, um, but they were there. And I thought, and I texted my midwife Sunday saying, hey, just wondering if you could just come and do a quick check of my blood pressure tomorrow. Um, I'm, I'm having headaches and flashing lights. And she's like, yep, I'll come tomorrow. So she came the next day, which was a Monday, took my blood pressure and within literally two seconds of her pumping it, she just like, she's like, um, I'm just gonna start that again. And I was like, okay, maybe she just made a mistake. But no, it's because she didn't believe the reading. <laughs> so she did again, and my blood pressure ended up being 140 over 104. Normal, I think, I'm not quite sure what normal top number is, but I think 140 is kind of like borderline high. But the bottom number, um, I think normal is between 70 and 80. So 104 is not great at all. <laughs> Yeah, not great at all. So obviously my body was giving me signs over the weekend that things were, um, you know, blood pressure was getting a bit too high. Um, so my midwife was like, look, we need to go to the hospital and just get this checked. And I was like, oh great. So I got Roman looked after, went to the hospital, got three blood pressure checks there and my blood pressure there was 100 and I think it went down to 130, which is relatively okay, over 96, which is still high, but it's, they called it borderline. So like, you can go home. I was like, hallelujah, because I hate sitting around hospitals. It's so boring. Um, so I got let off that time with no drugs and no hospital stay. Um, but I walked into labor and delivery and they're like, are you in labor right now? I'm like, no. And they're like, that's good because we're full. <laughs> they had every single room full. So lucky I wasn't delivering right then and there. Um, so yeah, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, things were okay. I still got that tiny nagging headache. Like it's not really hurting me, but I can tell it's there. Um, that's continued. And then just today I had a really large bout of the flashing lights. And even right now as I talk, I can see little, very little lights moving around in my eyes right now even. So I'm not too confident my blood pressure is going to be great tomorrow. But my midwife basically said to me to just get prepared because she's like, you're not going to make it to 40 weeks. This is just, you know, it happened with Roman. It's, we were, it was bound to happen again in this pregnancy. We just got a little bit further before things started turning to crap. And um, yeah, so they don't induce until 37 weeks, obviously unless it's life-threatening, they don't induce until 37 weeks because 35, 36 week babies um, still can have some um, breathing troubles and might need 
small NICU stays. So they don't ingest till 37 weeks and so that's only a week and a bit away and that's crazy which means in a week and a bit Roman would have been born because he was born at exactly 37 weeks. So that's just crazy and a very big wake up call to me to get stuff done like like now even if I do make it to 40 weeks which my midwife reckons it ain't gonna happen um it's better for me to be prepared now because it could just be me going to the hospital get one check up and they'd be like you're being admitted and you're being induced you know it just happens like that that's what happened with Roman I went in because I saw some stars they're like we're gonna keep you in overnight and then the next morning they're like we're inducing you today I didn't even have any bags packed I didn't have Roman's bag with me. I was completely unprepared. So this time it's not going to happen. First thing we're going to do is um, make sure my bag and Mila's bags are packed. I'm doing that today, finishing up the last little things I need to grab. Um, I will be doing a what's in my hospital bag and what's in Mila's hospital bag possibly today. I, I've got some time so I might do that today. And um, the other day, some friends dropped off some freezer meals. It was so generous of them. Pumpkin soup, stew, um, macaroni and cheese, all in little bags, ready to go in the freezer. And I was just, my heart melted. I was just like, this is incredible um, and extremely generous. So I need to start doing my own freezer meals or even um, my next grocery shop, which is um, next Wednesday. I do it fortnightly on a Wednesday, same time every day. Anyway, um, I'm going to be getting a whole bunch of foods that are literally no think. You you just don't have to think. You just shove them in the oven or something. So like lots of hot chips, um, lots of like chicken drumsticks even. All you need to do is shove them in a, in a on an oven tray and put them in the oven and they cook themselves, you know. Bags of frozen vegetables, stuff that I don't have to think about. Stuff that I don't have to cut up. Stuff that I don't have to peel. So yeah, hot chips, chicken, and like lots of bags of frozen vegetables. Because I know with Roman, I was dog tired, Martin was dog tired, and we just did not feel like cooking. You don't. If you're pregnant, you do not feel like cooking when you have a newborn baby. I'm letting you know this now. Do freezer meals. It will save your life. And I plan on doing some baking. Stacey said she's going to do a little bit when she comes here when baby's born. Um, you know, some rice risottos would be absolutely lovely. And some banana cakes and biscuits and all that kind of stuff. So getting prepared with the meals because obviously we have a toddler now to look after as well. And um, he needs to be fed. Sometimes me and Martin could go without and we could just have a toast and be fine. But we have a toddler who um, will need to be well fed. Um, so that's pretty much it for kind of like I don't really have any pregnancy symptoms I'm just you know it's just my blood pressure Mila seems to be fine I have a, an ultrasound on Monday just to check her growth again um, and you guys will be coming to all these appointments by the way because I'm doing daily till baby um, so you'll be coming along and seeing all these appointments as well but other than that let's get on to baby buys I've got no buntings to show you today <coughs> there's still a few that are, have people have said that they should be arrived so um, I need to get the PO box checked but um, latest baby buy is this it is an Ergo Carrier um, infant insert um, you cannot have a newborn in an Ergo Carrier without one of these because they're just too little you know until they've the limbs are growing out a bit um, so you stick them in this because baby needs to be up here like you should be able to feel their head there Whereas in the Ugo carry there's so much space and they'll just kind of slot right in and it's, you know, suffocation hazard and all that. So, um, here's my carrier. So that's obviously against my chest. Um, and this baby's obviously in it. it sits there and keeps them all nice and secure. Um, there's a big puffy bit there which kind of hoists them up a bit. So that was my baby buy for this week and um, this one doesn't actually match the I've got the petunia, uh, the pickle bottom Ugo carrier and this is actually for the galaxy one but I just thought this one was cute anyway so I just I just got it because it doesn't matter it's not going to be used for that. Alright you guys thanks so much for watching and um, catch me in my next vlog which will probably be today's Daily Till Baby. Alright guys see ya!